I saw this problem on Reddit and I kind of liked it. Uh, so I figured I'm going to solve it. And I did change the numbers up just so I could say, hey, it's my, it's, it's my own problem. But let me, let me describe the problem. So I have a no friction table. And you can buy these at Walmart or Target. They have both, both of those places have zero friction tables. I'm joking. Uh, and on that table, there is a block. I'm calling that mass two, M2. And on top of that, there's another block, mass three. And there's a string connecting mass two over a frictionless, massless pulley connected to mass one hanging down below. And so I'm going to let this go. And these are going to slide. But the question is, how large of a mass can M1 be so that M3 doesn't slip off of mass 2? That's the question. And so I pick some masses here, um, and I'm not sure if this will work. I'll pl plug these in at the end, but mass 2 is 250 grams, mass 3 is 210, and the coefficient of friction is 0.5 in between mass 2 and 3. Again, there's no other friction anywhere else. So this is a half Atwood machine problem. Uh, and you may be tempted to say, oh, I'm going to do uh, use the equation for half Atwood machine. And you probably could get by that way. But I'm going to do this the best way. And the best way is to say, OK, I'm going to start off by looking at the forces on mass 1. So let's draw the a force diagram for mass 1. So here's mass 1. And then the forces look like this. I have the downward gravitational force, M1G. G is a vector. G is uh, 0, negative 9.80 newtons per kilogram. That's the gravitational field. And then I have a tension pulling up, T. Now, in the y direction, I know that the following must be true. F net y. I'm going to assume this thing is accelerating down. So then I have uh, the y force of this is just going to be positive T. That's going to be negative m1g. Notice these are no longer vectors. I'm dealing with the y components. And that's going to be equal to, uh, I'm going to write this as negative m1a. So this is the Newton's second law. It says the net force is mass times acceleration. And in this case, I'm assuming the acceleration is in the negative y direction. And so that's the value a. Its mass is m1, so I have an equation. Now, I don't know t, and I don't know a. And I don't know m even, so it doesn't really help that much. OK, now let's go to mass 2. Let's do mass 3, actually, because it's going to be a little bit easier. So mass, here's mass 3, that one right there. So if I draw the block right like here, I have a downward gravitational force pulling on it, m3g. I have an upward pushing normal force. I'll call this n3. This is the force on 3. It's the contact force between the block below it and uh, pushing up on there. And then if this is accelerating that way, then there's going to be a uh, frictional force between m2 and m3, and it's going to push m3 this way. So there's going to be a frictional force. I'll call that f3. So. Um, I can solve two equations here. I can say the net force in the y direction is going to be zero because this block does not accelerate up or down. So F net y equals uh, N3 minus M3g equals zero. So from this, I can solve for N3. So N3 equals M3g. Now in the x direction, I have this, f net x equals uh, what force are acting in the x direction? It's just a frictional force. So it's f3, and that's going to be equal to m3a. Now here's an important thing. If this string is unstretchable, then the acceleration of this block moving down in the y direction has to be the acceleration of this moving in the positive x direction. If, if that wasn't true, if, if this has a greater acceleration, then as time goes on, the distance between these would be, get larger and, and it would not be a stretched cable. So, But I have this equation and I have that equation. So I actually have a whole bunch, three equations so far. Now, I don't know A. I don't know, I do know N3. I can find that exactly. Uh, I don't know the friction force, but what I can find is the following. If 
friction is static friction, then F3, the magnitude, would be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times N3. That's, that's how we model the static friction force. If I'm looking for the greatest mass, then I need the greatest friction. So this is actually, we're going to be right here, F3 equals mu S N3. Well, that helps out a lot. Right, because now I can actually solve for uh, the acceleration. So let's go up here. Um, I know the coefficient, and I can put plug that in down here. So this equation becomes mu s n three equals m three g, no n three a. Right. All I'll do is substitute this in right here. Now I can substitute also N3 is M3G. So I get, running out of room a little bit, scoot it up, mu S times N3, which is M3G, equals M3A. And this mass actually cancels, and I get the acceleration. A equals mu S times G. And that's the, that's the magnitude of the gravitational field, right? So it's positive. Okay, so now I know the acceleration. That's useful. If I go up here and I know the acceleration, I don't know the mass, so I can't find the tension. Okay, but I do know that. So now let's look at block M2. Now, you may be tempted to say, well, I'm just going to treat these as one block and find the tension. And that's probably the best strategy, but that's kind of a trick, too. And I don't want to do a trick. I don't want to. So I'm not going to. So I'm going to draw the uh, mass 2. So let's draw the, the force diagram. Here's my block. I have the downward pulling gravitational force, M2G. I have the upward pushing normal force, N2. It's not the same as the other one. And then I actually have a downward pushing force, N3. I should draw these as vectors. Because if block 2 pushes up on M3, then M3 pushes down on M2. Forces come in pairs. That has to be true. Now I have the tension pulling this way. But also, since this block pushes to the right on M3 with a friction force, M3 pushes back with a friction force on this one. So I'll call this F3. So that looks pretty crazy. But it's not so bad, because if I draw this in the y direction, I can say F net y is going to be N2 minus N3 minus M2G equals 0. It doesn't accelerate in the y direction. And I know, I already know N3, I could solve for N2, but who cares? It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't come into play. So let's look at the, uh, the, y, the x force, F net x is going to be equal to T minus F3 equals M2A. Well, here, do I know a value for M through F3? I do. Do I know a value for A? I do. So I can use this to solve for the tension. T equals M2A minus F3. So let's put in the stuff that we know. I know A is, uh, is going to be M2 times A, which is mu S times G from before. And then F3 is going to be equal to minus M3A, which is also mu SG. So I get equals, um, wait, A, this should be plus. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's plus. I moved to the other side. So this is going to be M2 plus M3 times mu S G. And that's, remember I said, oh, you could just treat this as one mass of the M2 plus M3. That's why. So now I have the tension. Now I can go back to this equation for mass one and solve for mass one. So here is the equation for mass one. I have T uh, minus M1G equals negative M1A T equals M1 times A plus G. And I also know T is this. 
So this is going to be equal to m2 plus m3 times mu sg. And I want to solve this for m1, so divide both sides by that stuff. I get m1 equals m2 plus m3 times mu s g. All of that over a plus g. Now let's just check real quick before you put in some numbers if this makes sense. This is going to be units of mass. Mu has no units. That has units of acceleration. That has units of acceleration. So this does give me the correct units of mass. Also, if I have a coefficient of friction of zero, if this goes to zero, I can't put any mass on there. And that makes sense there too. Okay, so let's just plug in our numbers. I'm gonna, I don't actually have to convert to kilograms, but I'm going to. So I had M2 was 0.25 plus 0.21 times 0.5 times, I'm leaving off the units, 9.8, all that over 9.8. Oh, I, I need to plug in for A. Uh, so that's gonna be plus 0.5 times 9.8. So this is equal to, on the bottom, it's 9.8 times 1.5, right, because I factored that out. Let's just plug that in our computer calculator here and find out what we get. Can you see that okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna say 0.25, I could've done that in my head, plus 0.21 is that, times 0.5 times 9.8, divided by parentheses 9. Point, uh, the 9.8 is canceled. I'm going to I'm going to do this again. times 1.5. And I get 1.53 kilograms. So over here, just so you can see this, uh, this is equal to uh, 2.5 plus 2.5 0.21 is going to be 0.46 times 0.5 times 9.8, but on the bottom I have 9.8, let's put that 9.8, 9.8, and I factor that out and I get 1 plus 1 point, or 0.5, and then the, the 9.8s cancel. So it's just 0.46 times 0.5 over 1.5, let's just make sure we get the same answer. So 0.46 times 0.5 divided by 1.5. Yep, I get the same thing. There you go, the end. Was that fun? I had fun. Okay, hope that helps.